Welcome back to part two of the Oprah interview revisited three years later. Let's jump in. Let's go. The next thing she said was that she and Harry gave their interviews after the South African tour, you know, where they stood in some of the poorest parts of Africa after having the red carpet rolled out for them and having the best of the best. And she cried that nobody had asked her if she was okay. She had said that they did that and they were just so tired and exhausted and they'd reached out to the palace for help, but she never said who they reached out to or why, actually. All right, moving on. Also, throughout the entire interview, she kept saying the palace didn't protect her, the palace didn't protect her. And when Oprah asked her what she meant, she said they wouldn't speak up on her behalf against any negative stories. Of course, we've since learned that the palace defended Megan at least nine times, including before she even joined the royal family. So her allegations that the palace fed her to the wolves was a lie. Right. All right, here's the next thing that she said. They didn't want him to be a prince or a princess, not knowing what the gender would be, which would be different from protocol. Well, that's an outlaw because she knows that per a letters patent that was put out by George V, it says the great-grandchildren of the monarch are not princes and princesses except for the eldest son of the Prince of Wales because he's next in line to the throne. And she was also aware of it because of the next thing she said. Member of color in this family not being titled in the same way that other grandchildren would be you know, the other piece of that conversation is there's a convention, I don't know if it's George V or George VI convention, that when you're the grandchild of the monarch, so when Harry's dad becomes king, automatically Archie and our next baby would become prince or princess or whatever they're going to be. FYI, Meghan was not the first woman of color in the family. Queen Charlotte was. But going back to the rule, even though she's aware of the rule... She's insisting that it's because her child is a child of color that he's not getting the title. Receive security. Who tells you that? Um, I heard a lot of it through Harry and then other parts of it through conversations with family members. Then she said that that title is his birthright and they're trying to take it from him, even though she understands the rules. Listen to this. No, but also it's not their right to take it away, Yeah. right? And so I think even with that convention I'm talking about, while I was pregnant, they said they want to change the convention for Archie. Mm. Well, why? Did you get an answer? No. You still don't have an answer? No. I'd also like to point out that while she's aware as to why her children didn't get the prince title, and she's claiming that some unknown person is trying to change the convention. The convention was never changed. She never showed any proof of that. She never named names. It's just some unknown person stated they're going to change the convention. You know, she didn't name anybody. and she, she doesn't have any proof. There's no receipts. I think it's pretty obvious she wanted Archie to have that prince title and nothing else was going to do and he wasn't entitled to it. By the way, the whole security thing, an infant doesn't need his own security. He's with the parents and they have security. I think she wanted a 24-7 guard just for Archie. All right, moving on. Okay, so it feels to me like things started to change when you and Harry decided that you were not going to take the picture that had been a part of the tradition for years. And we weren't asked to take a picture. That's also part of the spin that was really damaging. I thought, can you just tell them the truth? Can you say to the world, you're not giving him a title and we want to keep him safe and that if he's not a prince, then it's not part of the tradition? Just tell people and then they'll understand. Mm -hmm. but, but they wouldn't do that. But you were, you both obviously were aware that that had been a part of the tradition and there was a, was there a specific reason why you didn't want to be a part of that tradition? I think many people interpreted that as you were both saying, we're going to do things our way, mm -hmm. or we're going to do things in a different way. That's not it at all. I mean, I think what was really hard, so picture now that you know what was going on behind the scenes, right? There was a lot of fear surrounding it. I was very scared of having to offer up our baby, knowing that they weren't going to be kept safe. 
So first she says, they didn't take the picture because nobody asked them, but then she turns around and changes her tune and says, well, why don't you just tell everybody that it's not part of the tradition because he's not a prince and you won't give him a title. So I think that's what happened. They weren't going to give a picture because they refused to let her son have the title of prince. She's like, you know what? You're not going to give him the title? I'm not letting you take his picture. That's what I think happened. So she, again, another lie. She also changed her story later on and said she gave birth at Portland Hospital and she was told she could not go out front by her doctor, by the way, and do the baby pictures because it would block the emergency room. Two problems with that. Number one, Fergie stood out front with both of her children when they were born. And number two, Portland Hospital does not have an emergency room. That's right. All right, let's move on to the next thing. So we had in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title, and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? And who, who is having that conversation with you? What? So, um, there is a conversation. Hold up, hold up. There's Stop several right conversations. There's several conversations. There's a conversation it. with you, with Harry, about how dark your baby is going to be, potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Hmm. So let's remember that there were multiple conversations that took place about the skin of the baby, the, you know, how dark the baby was going to be. Except when Harry came out, he said there was one conversation that took place before they were even married. So Megan lied. And that conversation that supposedly took place took place over a breakfast table where Camilla even said the children will be gorgeous. Right. Okay, let's move on. And FYI, just to throw it out there, there was also conversations that, or there was suggestion that Harry might have initiated the conversation early in the relationship and said, you know, if he could have kids with her, then they would get rid of the pasty white skin. Mm hmm. All right, now we can move on. All right, now we're up to the part where Megan starts talking about her being suicidal. Listen to this. To say it at the time. And ashamed to have to admit it to Harry, especially, um, because I know how much loss he suffered. Mm -hmm. But I knew that if I didn't say it, that I would do it. Just sitting there and and then going, okay, well, go upstairs and put your makeup bag in your sink and try to pull well, yourself together. Well, nobody should have to go through that. And you know, Harry and I are working on this mental health series for yeah. Apple. And we, yeah, so we, 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 we hear a, a lot of these stories. Nobody should have to go through that. It takes so much courage to admit that you need help. Mm -hmm. It takes so much courage to voice that. As I said, I was ashamed. I'm supposed to be stronger than that. That statement, by the way, pertains to when she told Harry that night that she was suicidal. So first off, we know for a fact she didn't do her own makeup. Her friend who did her makeup for her wedding was in town for the weekend, was putting up posts, you know, all the time. So when she said she went upstairs after telling Harry she was suicidal to do her makeup, that was a lie. I know it seems ridiculous to bring that up. It's such a small, stupid little lie, but it's still a lie. And the devil is in the details. Now, she claimed that they went to Cirque du Soleil that night and she was super suicidal. And every time the lights went down in the box, she was just sobbing her eyes out. So here's some video from that night. Here she is without Harry glued to her side. Now, Harry has reappeared and they're having general discussion. So, take a look at these video clips. <laughs> 
Then they took their seats. Here they are. Now this is what Megan said was happening that night. And every time that those lights went down in that royal box, I was just weeping. The pictures you are now looking at are the pictures of her leaving that night with Harry. And as you can see, her makeup is perfect. There are no streaks going down her cheeks. Her eyes are not red. Her mascara is perfect. This does not look like somebody who's been weeping in the royal box. Now, Megan claims that while she was suicidal, she reached out to somebody in HR. All right. She didn't call her mom. She didn't call her handpicked team of OB doctors. Right. She didn't call anybody. She just spoke with HR and they said, sorry, we can't help you. Even though mental health had been available for Harry and William and Charles. Now, interestingly enough, she never gave the name of the person who supposedly turned her away. And Neil Sean, as of this week, has said that they've asked for the name of the person and they can't find the person that she supposedly spoke with. Remember, she's always copying Diana in one way or another. Remember this? And this time, things became so difficult that you actually tried to injure yourself. Mm. Is that true? Mm. Now, Diana's going to finish her answer, and then you want to see the next clip. Is that true? Well, we were a newly married couple, so obviously we had those pressures too, and we had the media who were completely fascinated by everything we did. And it was difficult to share. Challenging. And then when you have a newborn, you know. You, mm -hmm. It's a long time ago, but I remember, yeah. yeah. You know, as, and especially as a woman, it's really, it's a lot. So you add this on top of just trying to be a new mom or trying to be a newlywed. It's, um... All right, that is the end of part two of the Oprah interview revisited three years later. Come and find me for part three. Oh,